All right, you guys, welcome to Trading Academy Day 37. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Crazy, crazy, crazy that it's been six weeks, bro, or almost six weeks. I think next week it'll be six weeks, but absolutely insane that I've been able to keep up uh, daily uploads every single day. I hope you guys have been enjoying the Trading Academy as much as I have, man. Um, if you guys have been enjoying it, please leave me a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how we're doing. And and if you guys are confused on anything, again, I have a free chat in the Discord, a little free section that you guys can conversate with me, ask me questions about certain concepts. If you guys are confused on it, the link will be in the description down below. You guys can find that there. It's completely free if you guys want that. Also, I just launched the waitlist for my mentorship. It's also in the uh, link down where you guys can find the free Discord section. If you click on that, it'll take you there as well. Uh, there's an option there you guys can read through what the uh, mentorship offers, but that is there. If anybody's interested in that, there is a wait list. It's still not done, right? It's not even, well, I guess it's like halfway, a little over halfway done. But uh, yeah, I have a wait list on there in case anybody wants to hop on the wait list if they're interested in that. Anyways, all right, guys. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about institutional order flow, the difference between bearish institutional order flow, how you can tell if it's you know bearish obviously if it's bearish order flow and the difference between bullish institutional order flow if you, how do you tell if like order flow is bullish or bearish right what's the difference between the two how do you identify it etc it's very 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 simple okay i'll just break it down for you obviously the first step in in identifying if order flow is bearish is obviously we just take it back to the basics right it's just trends right are we making higher highs are we making lower lows are we making higher lows are we making lower highs etc right how do you I, like are we in a bullish or a bearish trend that's the first step right okay is structure bearish is structure bullish okay once we identify that the next step is to identify okay is price respecting bearish pd arrays if if we think that price is bearish right for the time being at least is price respecting bearish PD arrays? And when I say PD arrays, I mean like fair value gaps, order blocks, breaker blocks, rejection blocks. Those are PD arrays. Okay, you just group them up. It's called PD array. All right. If I if I say a PD array, a premium PD array can be a, a fair value gap, an order block, etc. Okay, that's what PD arrays mean. If anybody's confused about that, because I know I was confused about that whenever I started learning about um, ICT and stuff. I was like, what the fuck are PD arrays? Right? Is that is that another like FEG or something? But Anyways, yeah, if you guys are bearish, you want to see is price respecting bearish PD arrays, meaning like are we respecting bearish fair value gaps, bearish order blocks, bearish breaker blocks, bearish rejection blocks, etc. right? Perfect example to show you guys bearish order flow is over here in this downtrend that we had back in uh, 2021, 2022, and yeah, pretty much 21 and 2022. Um, we had a bearish downtrend on the weekly chart. So um so we obviously were bullish right during COVID and, and 2021, we were pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, and then we ended up not making a higher high, right? So that's another, that's a warning sign right there, right? We hit the rejection block right there. Pretty sure we had SMT up here. Let me go ahead and check that for you guys. So that way there's no confusion or anything like that. Make sure that we had, yeah, so we had an SMT divergence here. So boom, SMT divergence here with the S&P 500. You guys see that right there at this high right here. S&P made a higher high. NASDAQ made a lower high. Okay, so let's go back to NASDAQ. So now that we identified the S&T, this is a rejection block, right? This is your first bearish PD array. Okay, this is an alarming. This is like the warning, right? The warning that's going to tell you, hey, we might go, we might be going lower or we might be starting a downtrend, right? A market maker sell model, which that video is going to be coming soon as well. Anyways, we might be starting a market maker sell model or or, or a downtrend, right? Basically, I don't want to confuse anybody here with uh, market maker sell and buy models yet. But this is a warning sign, right? The SMT, okay? Now we get the SMT and then we displace lower. We take out all the sell side and then we end up breaking structure, right? We end up breaking structure at the low that made the lower high end up breaking structure. We end up closing with a nasty displacement to the downside. Okay, so now our job is to identify, okay, is order flow flipping bearish here? And it is, right? We're respecting all kinds of bearish PD arrays, right? We have a bearish fair value gap here that we respect for weeks, right? And then we also have a breaker right here, 
right? This is a breaker right here. So last swing low that made the, the swing high right here, right? So this is obviously a bearish breaker, right? Drag that out. This is called the unicorn, right? When you have the breaker and the fair value gap combo, that is a unicorn setup. More on that very, very soon. But as you guys can see, order flow is flipping bearish. We have our first telltale sign, our first warning sign right here with the SMT at the highs, nasty displacement down. We actually have an order block right here. Uh, we never got the closure, the body candle closure below this low. So I wouldn't really use this. I would still be a little like wary, like, hey, you know, maybe we could just sweep this liquidity and go back up. But the SMT is like the warning, the warning shots, right? Uh, we and then the following week we end up getting a nasty closure below this, so this would be a valid order block now. And then now we have the breaker and the fair value gap combo. And look, we're respecting, right? We're respecting the breaker and the fair value gap. And obviously we go way lower, okay? And now this is going to be your change in the state of delivery again, or your order block right here. We don't need to just use the opening price of the order block. I think I forgot to mention that in the order block video, but it is a very sensitive spot for the order block. It's a very, uh, it's where price will react most of the time. As you guys can see here, ignoring this part over here, uh, we pretty much respect the bearish order block here and we go lower, we go lower. We come back up and we still respect the bearish order block there or the change in the state of delivery. We keep going lower, we keep going lower. And then we have another order block right here. And guess what? We tap the opening price right there. Boom, go lower. And that is pretty much how you could tell if order flow is bearish. Is it respecting bearish PD arrays? It's very, very simple. Is the down is the uh, trend a downtrend or an uptrend, right? Obviously, it's a downtrend right here because we keep breaking structure. We're not reversing after any liquidity sweeps. We're respecting bearish PD arrays. This is how you can tell if it is bearish order flow, right? Or bearish institutional order flow. It's respecting all these order blocks. Um, here, we actually had a break of structure, but ended up respecting this order block right here. So if anybody like would have like got long anywhere right here. The longs, like if you were looking for longs in a downtrend, they're always short lived. They're very temporary before price reverses back down. That's another thing I want to add on to. Um, if order flow is truly bearish, then the bullish PDA rays are not going to be respected in a downtrend and in bearish order flow, right? Like if our trend is to the downside and we need to sweep all this liquidity over here, right? We have a bunch of lows like over here, for example. Um, that's another thing I just forgot to mention is drawn liquidity is going to be your best friend also in identifying order flow, right? Because if you don't have any more uh, liquidity to attack, then it's going to be kind of difficult because markets usually go into consolidation before reversing. Uh, for example, like here, um, drawn liquidity is like the first thing that's like the, that's like the first thing you guys need to know, right? Is drawn liquidity. And then, you know, obviously is order flow bearish down to, you know, are we coming down to sweep more liquidity over here to the left, right? We have a bunch of liquidity here. We have a bunch of little swing lows right here that we need to sweep. Obviously, order flow is bearish and it's respecting all the bearish PDA rays until we sweep all that liquidity, right? And now, like I said, once we sweep all the liquidity and stuff, right, we don't need to go lower. Now we can continue the uptrend, right? It's very healthy for a market to pull back and then continue higher. Um, but like I said, after we sweep a lot of liquidity, we usually enter like a consolidation phase before reversing to the, to the upside. So now order flow, how do we tell if it's flipping bullish here, right? How, do, how can we tell that it's flipping bullish here? Well, like I said, when order flow is starting to change and you guys will, you guys will, um, learn about this. I don't know when, but it, it should be sometime very, very soon. I'll make the video on it. It's a market maker, sell model and buy model. Uh, a lot of the times when these start, you will have an SMT before these start or at the time that they start, right? Um, I'm sure here we had an SMT at these lows or somewhere around here before reversing to the upside. So let's go ahead and check that. So if I go over here, let's see if we had an SMT divergence here. Um... Let's see. Yeah, we actually did. We let me see the Dow Jones. Give me one second. Let's see the Dow Jones. I'm pretty sure we had an S and T somewhere around here. Um, yeah, I think we had it here with Nasdaq, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. This is the S and P. Sorry, guys. I'm 
taking my time with this because I want to show you guys that this is crazy stuff. Um, so we had an S and T here. Um, I would have liked if I would have liked this to be an S and T at the swing swing lows, like right here. Uh, however, we had an S and T here at these um, weekly lows right here. You guys see that? Um, again, most of these, most of the time, like when we're about to reverse, we usually get a pretty nice S and T like at very important swing lows like this. But in this case, it looks like the S and T happened like right here right um and at these lows right here as you guys can see here if i hover over my mouse you guys will see that this low is that low right there on nq um these lows never got swept with this low and then you know these lows got swept right there so we had an smt right there so we start pushing up we start getting a break of structure and now order flow is switching right we're disrespecting bearish pd arrays now um when order flow is starting to change we'll start disrespecting bearish P arrays, okay, pretty much. And then we start breaking structure, and then we start respecting what? Bullish P arrays, okay. So here is a weekly fair value gap. We never closed under. Remember, wicks do the damage, bodies tell the story. We start pushing up, and then we continue higher. So maybe you're a little sketched out here. Um, maybe you're here, you're a market participant and you see this break of structure and then you're thinking, okay, maybe this is just a lower high to continue lower, right? Because we had another, uh, break of structure over here and maybe you're thinking the same thing right here, but you have to make sure that again, remember what I said over here in a, in a bearish downtrend and in bearish order flow, bearish or bullish, sorry, bullish PD arrays are going to be disrespected in a downtrend and when order flow is truly bearish, okay? Now, when we're flipping and we have SMTs, that's going to be like, remember, the warning shots, right? We're going to push up. Um, and then we start pushing up, right? We start disrespecting these bearish PD arrays. We don't make a lower low anymore, right? Uh, the indexes refuse to make lower lows, right? Now we made a higher high right here. And now we made a higher low. Right, it's very very simple. Now we're respecting bullish PD arrays while disrespecting bearish PD arrays. Okay, and we also have a. Or actually, no, we don't. Sorry, dismiss that. Uh, but we are respecting bullish PD arrays. Now we keep pushing up. We make a higher high. Remember, draw and liquidity is going to be king. So we have our draw and liquidity right here. We have relative equal highs right there. We respect the bullish PD array. We push up, and then where's our next draw and liquidity? It's going to be obviously up here. Okay, um, so now we close above, uh, we, we close a body above this buy side and we just kind of consolidate here, right? We consolidate here, we're just cooling down before the next leg up. We push up, we close a body above that, where's the next draw on liquidity, right? This is gonna be, this is bullish order flow, right? Once you identify your clear draw on liquidity, um, this should continue to respect bullish PD arrays, okay? As you guys can see here, it taps into that fair value gap. Obviously, I'm looking at a weekly chart right now. Like if I were to go on a daily chart, there'd probably be a lot more daily PD arrays, like daily fair value gaps, daily order blocks, breakers, etc. I'm just showing you guys because this is all relative, right? You can use this on a five minute time frame, a weekly time frame, etc. Uh, but we sweep this buy side here, and then look, we start going lower, right? So we enter a period of bearish order flow right here just to go higher, right? Um, so we end up sweeping liquidity here. So now we have a lot of, of sell side to work with. We have sell side there. We got sell side there. We have equal lows down here. We got equal lows right there. Like we have a lot of stuff to work with right here. So we end up, um, we end up sweeping liquidity here. We end up breaking structure on the daily going lower. Let me just go to the daily real quick. Cause it'd probably be easier to show you guys this. All right. So obviously we have sell side, sell side, sell side, relative equal lows, uh, weekly fair value gaps under that. So um again our draw liquidity is going to be higher all-time highs right we sweep this and now we enter a period of bearish order flow okay so um i'm pretty sure we got an smt right around here let's check real quick yeah so like i said the smt is going to be like your warning shots right we had a higher high formed here on the es and then on nq we did not okay we had a lower high so once you get that SMT, that's going to be your warning shots, right? SMT after a sweep of a key level, right? A sweep of buy side, you get the SMT right there. This is your warning shots. And then look, right? The one that makes the lower high 
is what? What's it respecting? Bearish PD arrays, right? In a premium also, right? If you were to drag this to here in your uh, lower time frames, maybe you can even do it on the daily here, but we're in a premium above this premium fair value gap, right? So it's respecting bearish PD arrays and disrespecting what, right? We have an order block here, disrespects it. Sweeps the low, closes below it, disrespects these bullish fair value gaps, right? It was reacting off of it, but then we have that SMT forming, right? So NQ shouldn't get above this high. It should be a protected high, right? Didn't hit the rejection block, but it shouldn't get above this high. And then we go way lower, right? And we keep going lower. And guess what? Look, we respect another bearish fair value gap right here on the daily, right? So we're entering bearish order flow, right? You guys follow me? And we have an order block right here. Just forgot to mark that right there. Boom, order block, right? SMT, bearish fair value gap. So now we're entering bearish order flow. So now what can you guys target on the daily time frame? You guys can target the sell side, right? Drawing liquidity. Drawing liquidity is going to be your main thing, okay? Once you know you're drawing liquidity, bearish order flow and bullish order flow become very, very easy to identify, right? We come down, sweep, right? And then right here, when we close under this, this body, when we close under this low, guess what the next candle does, right? What does it do? Comes back and retests this order block down, right? Pushes up. Anything anything above the highs, like in bearish order flow, any pop above a high is going to get rejected, right? We're rejecting highs and breaking lows, right? Boom. Close under. And now, boom. What do we do? We flip into bullish order flow for temporary, right? This is just temporary, okay? We come up. We close above this fair value gap that sent us lower, right? Push up. We close a body above this fair value gap right here. Let me go ahead and mark it right here. That forms right there. Push up. You can actually long right here just off the daily candles, right? Remember the inverse fair value gap video. We push up. We take out this drawn liquidity here. And guess what? Boom, back down, right? Back down into this inverse fair value gap. But also we have what? We have this bullish fair value gap that disrespected what? This bearish fair value gap. So now we're going into bullish order flow for temporary, right? Just temporarily, we're going into bullish order flow. So now we start pushing back up, back up, back up. So this becomes our new drawn liquidity. So does all these highs right here. We end up clearing all these highs right here. Let me go ahead and delete all this because it's going to get messy. We end up clearing all these highs right here. Boom, clear that high. And guess what? We tap into what? What do we tap into, guys? We not only just clear the buy side, but we tap into this daily bearish order block right here, right? Boom, tap into it, come back down. Boom, right here, okay? We come into a daily bullish fair value gap, all right? Now it's respecting it for a little bit, right? Now, this is when you want to start looking at the other indexes to see if you get some sort of uh, some sort of uh, SMT because now that you flipped it, but you still have drawn liquidity down here, right? You still have these nice, very, 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 very nice equal lows down here, which would be my main target, which it was when I was trading with the group. This is what I was telling them. These are going to be the main targets to focus on, right, going forward. But as you guys can see here, this is when you want to start looking at the other indexes and seeing, okay, do we have any SMTs occurring here because we've been consolidating for a couple of days or a few days or whatever. Um, and we actually do, right? So we get an SMT right here at these highs with the YM and the ES, right? ES makes a higher high, right? YM makes a higher high and Q does not make a higher high right here at these two daily candles right here, Thursday and Friday. Boom, we go lower. We close a body below what? The 50% of the fair value gap, of the bullish fair value gap. This should be a telltale sign that, okay, maybe we're going to wick. We're going to wick the bottom part of the fair value gap or we're going to close under it. And guess what? The next week, boom, right? The next week right over here on NQ, let me go ahead and do this so you guys can focus on this chart. The next week when Monday opens, Tuesday opens, we don't close a body below it, but then guess what? Wednesday, boom, right? We close under it. So now we're continuing the what? The bearish order flow, right? So um, we're going lower. We're going lower. We're going lower. Boom, boom, boom. And then we have a what? 
bearish fair value gap right we go lower we go way lower and then we sweep these equal lows and then we have we form more equal lows right under those equal lows right and under those equal lows if i go to the weekly actually these were these equal lows under those equal lows were the fair value gap okay but we we did form another set of equal lows right there on the daily like i just showed you guys i thought i thought under these fair value or i thought under these lows were the uh, weekly fair value gap but my bad and anyways we ended up sweeping these forming another set of equal lows we come up we respect this we go back down we form those equal lows I'm pretty sure we had an smt there and we did right we had an smt right here so remember again right yes makes a lower low and q makes equal lows this is a valid smt as well right so we go into a bullish order flow for a little bit we disrespect this fair value gap that sent us lower we push up we push up we push up we clear out this buy side right here into what what do we go into though what do we go into above that high we tap a premium daily fair value gap Take out your fib, mark out the swing high to the swing low. We're also an OTE, deep premium, right? Deep premium right here. Tab the daily fair value gap in the deep premium, and then guess what? Continue the bearish order flow again, right? Come down, come down, come down, come down. We break all these lows. We reject highs and break lows. And then we tap this daily fair value gap, right? We respect it, go lower. We take out these lows. And then we obviously start flipping back into bullish order flow, right? We start disrespecting what? We start disrespecting the fair value gap that sent us lower. We close above it. We start pushing up. We disrespect every single bearish PD array, even this old order block over here, right? We start disrespecting it and we actually start using it as support, right? But I, I don't really like dragging it out this much. Um, I like using the most recent PD arrays um that is, that is occurring over here so again if we start flipping bullish then all bullish pra should be respected or a majority of them right a good rule of thumb is if three pd arrays are being disrespected three of them then you should hop out or you should reconsider that order flow is changing right three pd arrays all right so Obviously, we start flipping bullish back uh, again. We start getting the bullish order flow. We start disrespecting bearish PD arrays and start respecting bullish PD arrays. As you guys can see here, we have a breaker. We push up. We close above all the buy side levels, right? We close bodies above all of them. Close bodies above all of them. Close bodies above all of them, right? We're not rejecting highs anymore, right? We're not rejecting highs and we're not breaking through lows anymore, right? As you guys can see here, it retested this old buy side liquidity level and then used it to go higher. But it should be respecting uh, bullish PDRAs. Once order flow is changing like this, it should respect the PDRAs in the direction that it is going. Again, drawing liquidity is going to be your best friend here. Once you have very clean buy side levels like this, um, the disrespect of the bearish PDRAs is going to be very important because that should tell you that bullish PDRAs should be respected if price is displacing with speed and displacement up to this uh, buy side, all these buy side levels, uh, bullish PDRA should be respected and bearish PDRA should be disrespected. So as you guys can see here, um, this fair value gap right here, and you guys don't need to wait for discount. I know that's kind of like contrary to belief, but you guys don't need to wait for discount. Like for example, if you guys were looking at this low all the way up to here, you guys would be waiting all day for price to get down to here. Usually when you have this much speed and displacement, this tells me that price is rushing. It's rushing to get up to this buy side, right? And sometimes it does it does retrace a lot more. It could retrace into the breaker, this change in the state of delivery, the CS, CISD or order block. Sometimes it does, but sometimes, or most of the time, really, when you have huge displacement like this, very, very quick displacement, it's it's usually telling you that price is... is in a hurry to take out this liquidity and all this buy side right here, right? This is what we like to call low resistance liquidity, right? Um, but that's that's gonna be another topic for another video. But we close above the highs. We're not rejecting highs like we were in this downtrend, right? We were rejecting all the highs and breaking lows. We're not doing that. We're closing above the highs and we're rejecting lows, right? This is how you could tell if order flow is bullish, right? Say it with me. When it's bearish, 
we reject the highs and we break lows. When we're bullish, we break the highs and we reject lows, right? It's, it's literally that simple. We're rejecting lows, we're breaking highs, right? Over here, we're rejecting highs, we're breaking lows. That's it, right? We're respecting the bullish PDA rates. We close above, we keep pushing up. We come back over here to the to what? We come back over here to the daily fair value gap, right? We tap the midpoint of it and then we continue higher. And then guess what? This is where we start. Um, this is where we start coming back into discount, right? So we come back into discount into OTE. And look, guys, we clear out this buy side and then we have a nice set of highs up here. But if you notice, Compared to this leg, this leg is slowing down. You guys notice the displacement slowing down, right? It's taking way more candles to go higher now. So this is where you shouldn't like start FOMOing and start trying to buy every bullish PDRA right here, right? There's no clear drawn liquidity all the way up here besides up these up besides these highs up here, right? And compare this leg, right, drawing up to this liquidity here, compared to this leg. Right, we don't have as much displacement speed right here, and we have way more candles working its way up. So you could expect that price is going to retrace back down to discount, or at least you know OTE or something. And it actually did respected a bullish PDA rate in OTE, and then guess what? We kept pushing higher. So yeah, guys, um, yeah, it's got super super bright in here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is going to be um, how you tell the difference between bearish and bullish institutional order flow. Hope this video helped a lot. If you guys have any questions or any concerns or anything like that, join the free Discord section. Link is in the description below. If you guys have any questions, leave comments in the YouTube video as well. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video helped clear some confusion about some things. And hopefully this video helped you guys in some sort of way. But yeah, catch you guys in the next Trading Academy Day video. Peace out, guys.